Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video we're going to do an unboxing video and review of the EX120 brushed quadcopter from Ishin. It came in this box, so let's open it up and see everything we're getting inside. So this is everything we've got inside. It didn't come with any instruction manual, but we'll figure it out. We have a standard USB charger. Two cells, 400mAh LiPo battery. This is the 30C version. Spare six spare propellers. I'm getting also here a spare rubber band, a couple of uh, Velcro scrap. So let's take a look on the quadcopter. This is the first brushed hexacopter from Ishin. It features six 8mm motors. This is the FR Sky version, so it's the buy by the fly. We're gonna shortly bind it. On the back we have a buzzer and six LED indicators. In the front we have a camera which it's angle, it's not adjustable. It's a little bit surprising they didn't put any adjustable position. This is a 25 milliwatt camera, 600 TVL CMOS camera. Let's quickly weigh it up. The weight without the battery is 65.4 grams and if we add the battery it's 87 grams so this is not a light quadcopter it's actually pretty heavy you can see how it's compared to the Ishin FB90 and to the my Pico X so the Pico X actually is smaller and provides much more power this is a brushless quadcopter but it's going to be interesting to find to fly this hexacopter the thickness of the bottom plate is 1.5 millimeters. The top plate is 1 millimeter. The length is about 119 millimeters and the width is about 140 millimeters. Binding is done by just putting the mode on D8. Hit bind. Then just power on the quadcopter while holding this button here. Then just press exit Then we can turn on the quadcopter again and it's bind already. You can see now that I'm moving the stick, it changes but we'll have to configure it on clean flight. Configuration is done by on the side with this USB port and you actually don't have to plug a battery in order to power on the receiver so that's a good thing. You can also even the camera you can change its frequency when the USB is on. I recommend before you start messing with the configurations just to back up so in case you do something wrong you can restore its backup because as you can see for example the direction of the flight controller is not normal because this is the this is the front and they switched it so it's a good thing just to save a backup. So I finished configuring all the setups you can see I put horizon on auxiliary 2, air mode and also added beeper, you can hear the beeper strength. You can see the indicator turns blue when it's uh, armed and green when it's been disarmed and each time that you press that you change a uh, mode that it also, it also beeps. Let's go through the default settings in case you have anything wrong. By the way, when you get this quadcopter, do yourself a favor and make sure that the board is on the right orientation because this one was was uh, set on minus 90. Sorry about all the noise, but it has to be here. The yaw degrees here it has to be 90. Then I took it to a, for a test flight and it didn't work properly. So make sure these are the settings for the board. Changing the channels of the quadcopter the video channels is inconveniently done by pressing 
this button here. Short pressing the button will change between the channel. And if you long press it, now you can change between the frequencies. I will include a link to this uh, full channel list and bands in the description of the video. You can see now it's blue, it's uh, because it's a uh, arm. And whenever I press, I turn left, you can see it's blinking here and here. This is a nice feature that will allow you for better orientation, especially in the dark. You can see that the yo is very slow. Right now I'm on uh, right now I'm on horizon mode. Let's put it on. Now it's on uh, acro mode. The yo is still pretty slow. These are the default settings. So probably we will have to just turn up the rates. So let's land it. And next thing, we'll take it flying outdoors.